Today, we will be joined by a special guest, Dr. Jerry Wright, a specialist in antibiotic resistance and director of Institute of Infectious Disease Research at McMaster University. Thank you for joining us here today, Dr. Wright. It's my pleasure, Vince. So there's been a lot of talk about superbugs in the media lately. Could you tell us what exactly is a superbug and how bad is this crisis? So superbugs are, is a colloquial term that's been used to describe bacteria that have, been, that have become resistant to m many different kinds of antibiotics. We call them multi-drug resistant bacteria, MDRs. Um, and these have become much more prevalent over the last uh, few decades. So antibiotic resistance has been known since the first use of penicillin in the early 1940s. Um, bacteria become resistant to, uh, for all sorts of different reasons. They produce uh, genes and proteins that, are in, that can break down antibiotics or they can pump them up and there's out, out of the cells. There's all sorts of different mechanisms that they can use. But more importantly, they can actually share these mechanisms with each other. And so when you use antibiotics, resistance spreads. And as a result, um, more and more bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. So if a bacteria becomes resistant to many different classes of drugs, we call them superbugs, um, in, at least in the newspaper. And then um, that becomes a, a, a pretty significant clinical problem. There are even uh, strains for which we can't treat with the antibiotics that we have today. What are some factors that are contributing to the development of antibiotic resistance? Yeah, it's a great question. So antibiotic resistance is, is a natural phenomenon. So bacteria are living creatures that evolve and they re reproduce very, very rapidly. Every time an antibiotic is used, it's selecting for resistance. Um, so that means you really have to use antibiotics wisely. You don't use them for reasons that might jeopardize their ability to be effective in the future. So that happens sometimes when, for example, um, go, to the, go to the doctor, you got a sore throat, you know, a bit of a headache, you're like, oh, I, feel, you know, I think I'm coming down with the flu or I've got some, something like that. And of course, that's probably not caused by a bacteria. It's more often caused by a virus. But you insist that, you know, the last time you gave me that antibiotic doctor, I felt better right away. And can you, can you please give me another, another script, right? And so patients demanding uh, antibiotics from clinicians um, contribute significantly to this. Because if you don't need the drug, you should never take it. Right? You should only take it if you actually, you actually need it. And most of, most of these kinds of infections that affect healthy people are not bacterial infections, they're viral infections. So inappropriate use by the public mm -hmm. and, um, and doctors who who will prescribe them anyways, contribute to the problem. Just with the ever-increasing amount of resistant bacteria, what do you think the future treatment of bacterial infections will look like? I think what we're going to see is more and more new generations of antibiotics being very narrowly targeted towards certain kinds of infectious bacteria. So those early antibiotics, for the most part, were what we call broad spectrum. So I think we're going to see more narrow spectrum drugs. I think we're going to hopefully see a lot more things like vaccines mm -hmm. against some of these, some of these common pathogens. Um, the, you know, the best disease, best infectious disease is the one that you didn't get. Mm -hmm. um, and vaccines can protect, um, protect us against these, these guys. Um, therapeutic uh, antibodies as well. So. Uh, even if you have an infection, sometimes you can actually you can you can take um, uh, a drug that is basically an antibody against those those uh, infectious organisms. Um, the use of things like probiotics to help you know boost the immune system to be able to um, displace um, infectious organisms and 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 help. Um, you know, help our immune system fight off infections. I think there's lots of different opportunities. Another one is, is bacteriophage, so the viruses that attack bacteria. We're still gonna need antibiotics. We're still gonna need to be careful with these drugs. But I think our arsenal of how we treat infections and how we prevent infections has got to evolve from the reliance on 
single drugs like we have in the past. What, do you, what can they do as the public to help prevent the developments of antibiotic resistance? So thing number one is to be educated, mm -hmm. right? Antibiotics are only useful for bacterial infections. They're not useful for viral infections. Most people don't know the difference between a bacteria and a virus. Mm -hmm. They just think of infection as infection, right? So uh, we need to be, we as a, as a society need to do a much better job at educating people uh, of what antibiotics are actually good for. Um, preventing infection in the first place is really important. So believe it or not, washing your hands uh, is a really good idea. So um, those kinds of things, especially in a hospital setting, right? Um, simple things like, like preventing viral infections in the first place. So getting a flu vaccine is a good idea because it's usually not the flu that's going to kill you. It's a secondary infec bacterial infection that you're going to get. Thank you for the interview again, Dr. Wright. It's my pleasure.